Hello, everybody. Hi. Thank you for attending uh, today's webinar about the Bachelor of Business Administration in Global Hospitality Management at Le Roche Comontana. We're very happy to, to see you all here. Uh, my name is Charlotte Andre, and I'm Content Marketing and Alumni Coordinator at Le Roche Comontana, and I'll be moderating this session today. Now, the reason for this webinar is really to take you through the various principles of the bachelor's degree and also talk about your career perspectives and the support that you can get from the careers team on campus. Uh, there will also be a Q&A session at the end of the webinar, so feel free to ask your questions either in the question box or in the chat box, and we'll make sure uh, to answer those throughout the presentation or uh, during the, the Q&A session with our special guests. Now, uh, to lead this presentation, uh, presentation today, we've got four guest speakers, Frank Gurning, Christina Seal, Hemangi Grover, and Sahara Diva uh, Visit Nantes. And I'm very happy to now leave the floor to them so that they can all introduce your, uh, themselves to you before uh, we start the presentation. Frank, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Thank you. And good afternoon and welcome to this short session because we have so much to share with you. So we'll always treat it as a too short, but still, it's an insight into what we do at Les Roches, and it's a, it's about also sharing our passion. Very quick intro about myself. So I'm the program director of the bachelor program. Um, I do that alongside looking after the postgraduate diploma student. And the reason I'm in that role is because I bring to the institution a little bit of industry background. I worked as hotel and general managers for many years and then joined education and shared a bit my passion basically about 12 years ago, I think 2009, 2008, 2009. And I've been at Le Roche ever since. And it's an interesting sort of way to keep in close contact with industry and then try to develop the curriculum with my industry experience and the trends and the happenings in the industry. So we'll look at the program in a few minutes. I will lead this to ask Christina to introduce herself for career services and she's a career counsellor. Thank you. Thank you very much Frank. Hi everyone, my name is, is Christina Siao and I'm one of the uh, career counsellors here at La Roche. Now the careers department, we play a role which we, I will share with you later, but from my background, I started off with uh, marketing and management as a bachelor's degree and did a little bit of that before deciding that you know I really wanted to do hospitality and came to La Roche to complete the postgraduate program, traveled around the world a little bit working here and there before coming back uh, to this role as a career counselor. What's great, uh, as Frank said, is also bringing in industry experience and being able to relate to uh, what your career aspirations and when you go on internship and wanting to come back um, talking about the challenges and the learning points it's something that i will be able to relate uh, because of the past experiences that i have and i do look forward to sharing more about the career opportunities during the presentation later now i'll pass it on to hamangi who will be able to share her experience as a current student good morning everyone uh, my name is Imangi Grover and I'm in my final semester at La Roche. I'm specializing in the digital marketing in digital marketing strategies and look forward to kickstart my career in the same department as well. Um, I've, I have um, finished my first internship in the food and beverage department at Penalonga Resort. It's a Ritz-Carlton company in Portugal and it was a great experience. I think um, I think the curriculum of La Roche offers you um, this experience, which is like no other, because it gives you um, it gives you an opportunity to step out in the real world and really um, get to know yourself better, get to challenge yourself, um, meet people, and satisfy their expectations in many different ways. And it's a great opportunity, and I hope we can um, we can share the same insights in this webinar too. Passing it on. Thank you. So good afternoon, everyone. So my name is Saharat Jiva Vizinon. I'm an alumni of La Roche, which I just recently graduated in 2010. And currently I took over my family business and I'm now the executive director of Cheating Hospitality Group. So our company is a Phuket-based hospitality group. So we currently have one operating hotel, which is the Four Points by Sheraton Phuket Patam Beach Resort. 
Uh, we also aim to operate around five more hotels with around two rooms by 2025, where I'm also now devoted as the advisory board member of the Phuket Hotels Association. So during my time at La Roche, I experienced two internships in Hong Kong, which was under rooms division department where I worked at one was W Hong Kong, a luxury lifestyle hotel, and one was another lifestyle hotel under the merit brand of the Meridian Cyberport. So during my time at La Roche, I was during my special um during my last semester as Hermangi said I also did my did, um, specialization in digital marketing strategies and a lot of things which I had which I have encountered and studied during La Roche, it was a great fundamental for me and helped me during my work at the moment. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much Saharat. Thank you, thank you. Um so now um, now that you know a little bit more about our speakers, we want to know more about you. So we're just about to share a poll with you all that you can answer. Uh, we want to know your relationship with the world of hospitality, which brings you here today, of course. Here you go. What is your relationship with the world of hospitality? Uh, you can select either I come from a family of hoteliers, I've always had a passion for hospitality, I like to make people happy, and I love the different opportunities offered by the industry. I see so far that people have had a passion for hospitality for forever. You like to make people happy. That's wonderful. I see we're still missing a couple of answers. All right. So most of you, uh, have always had a passion for hospitality, so you're in the right place. Uh, and of course, uh, I see that some of you want to make people happy and uh, love the different opportunities that the industry offers you. So that's great to, to read. Uh, now that we, we know this about you all, I think we can get started uh, uh, with the program description. Um, let me share the screen. Here you go. Frank, this is for you. Very good. Thank you. Um, I think it's, I actually like to listen to the experiences of former students and current students too. And Christina was also a former student, <laughs> yes. But because it's interesting because, and what you voted there for is bringing it together really, you know, you need to have a passion to work in this industry. Yes, some may have, a family business to go and take over and everything but it's by no means all the students you and even that taking over a business it comes you need the passion to do it and i'm sure sahara is there in his role because he had the passion it's not because he's just pushing numbers and so welcome and i'll run through different aspects of what le roche is about the reason to choose le roche the program itself and then different opportunities with internship will be discussed so there's quite a variety of topics we will discuss but we know that for instance you know we are already a diverse group here the panel discussion i mean we by working experience we've probably worked on except south america and africa i think from what i heard is we've worked everywhere and um, we have lived in most of those countries as well i've done five countries in my working life you know so you know everybody has that and it's one of the great opportunity in the industry so Le Roche the way to look at it either you join Le Roche and you say okay I could study in Spain I could study in Switzerland I could study in China and the bachelor program is the same I say the same it's never exactly the same because the same has always differences it's if you go, let's say, and study in Switzerland, it will be authentic Switzerland. If you go to study in Marbella, it will have the authenticity of being in Spain. 
if you go to China and Shanghai, it will have more authenticity of being based in China. So it, it's a choice there. The you saw in the video earlier, it's very much high the countryside in the mountains we are in Ne Roche. It's a fantastic location and in a very popular ski resort and actually summer mountain resort as well in Switzerland. So each campus is of their own sort of as its own authenticity, which is important to remember if you make a choice between one or the other. The larger campus is certainly in Switzerland today and it is still the sort of the parent campus to the other two. So that's just for location. Of course, you know, you have the the teams are different, but the bachelor program is the same and the degree you get at the end is the same. In Shanghai, they do not do the last two semesters of the bachelor program, but this is details you can discuss certainly with your education counselor. In Les Roches, so if you don't travel to the campuses, come to Les Roches Grand Montana. And I think being the larger campus, we have the most nationalities on campus, which is something to learn from, to cherish, to be really rejoicing in. Because mixing, if you love people, if you love that hospitality, if you think you want to join the industry because you have the passion for it, it will be a passion to please people from all groups, nationalities, national origins, religion, whatever it is. You don't discriminate by the nature because you love people. So it's the campus, typically around 100 nationalities on campus. And that is really from all over, the, really the, all the continents of the planet are represented. Of course, more students from where tourism is emerging of course if suddenly there's a big boom in a specific country you'll have more people from that country but on the whole it's a very good representation from around the world this ingredient of sort of embracing and being mixed with people of different national origin passports and everything is something that when you study fully on campus it really helps you and then you have in the campus, of course, that very close relationship with your faculty members. There's a ratio here of 15 to one on your screen there that you know, the number of faculty per student. That doesn't mean that you are staying as a group of 15 for the same with the same professor for all your semesters, but that's a ratio. That means if you read numbers, there's a very close relationship and bond over the semesters that you develop. It's part of the culture, the identity of Les Roches. You will see, and you may have heard of it, that Les Roches is not just a school, it's a way of life. And you will have seen that maybe in some of the marketing um, publications, but it is really true. It is something that we faculty members, and I'm in charge of this undergraduate program, and I work with the graduate school as well, but we all have that same sense of responsibility. We want you, as a future student to succeed. Everybody will succeed in different ways. That doesn't matter. We understand that. And this is where our ratio of 15 to one is very good because we are very close in contact with our students. So in the culture that we want to keep. The, so the, with that low ratio, of course, we have that balance in class and off class activities. Now the whole curriculum in Les Roches is developed around that sort of blended learning where you will have, yes, your academic courses, of course you need them. You will have the practical arts, and that is to me, I still remember my practical arts semesters at hotel school, and I'm going quite a few years because I'm a bit older than you, I've had already many lives, I think, but <laughs> it's about 40 years ago I would have started, and. The, the, the experience in the kitchen, the experience in service and everything, it's still with me. But, and then, so we have, so your academic, you've got your practical arts, sort of the skills you develop, and we will go through that in a bit more detail in a few slides, and then the opportunity to go on internship. And this can be anywhere in the world, and it's really something where, and I'm sure Christina will talk about it, but you need to take yourself out of a comfort zone, you heard traveling is important. You heard that 
experiencing different things all over the world is important. So you really take it and with famous brands, if you stay in hospitality and hotel industry itself, you know, the Four Seasons, the Ritz Carlton, the Peninsula, you can name them from the top to the more dynamic, current, exciting new concept, call them 25 hour hotels, Citizen M, whatever it is, you know, Indigo, there's no limit. It's very much, and but I won't take the job of Christina, but it's a, a fit between you and an internship opportunity. Anyway, let's move on from this. So it's a blended learning, which is really absolutely very important. So what do we have next? The program itself. So the program itself, we basically have five semesters on campus and the two internships, and they are arranged in a sequential manner to make sure that every internship helps you to consolidate on the learning outcome of one semester, the preceding semester, then you've got an internship, and with the learning of that, you're then prepared for, and I'm looking at the slide, the slide in front of you there for BBA3, then we build BBA4, to prepare you for the internship in BBA 5, and you come back and you reflect on BBA 5, in BBA 6, and you move on like this. So it's the blend during the semesters that's really useful. It's really done, it, the progression should happen in this sort of seamless way. And it, in the end, you turn out to be, I mean, Emangi, hopefully in a few months when she's completed, because she's still studying, but like Sahara, you know, ready to really contribute when you join the industry. You're not just a joiner at the bottom rank or something, you're just coming there with something to say, something to add, an opportunity for a business. And this is what you have to think about. But this is where the program has its strength and we build all that from the BBA1 semester, which is in a way the best semester to build close tie with your friends. And maybe, Emanji, can you remember some positive, well, it can be negative, but a key factor of your BBA1 practical arts semester, what you will never forget? Definitely. For me, my favorite semester was BBA1 because I, for me, honestly, I never researched about the campus so BBA1 was a surprise to me altogether because when I looked at my friends and when they were in other universities they would be doing academics and I would be doing practical arts and it was it was an altogether different experience and one thing that I really remember is time management it taught me how to be punctual because I would always have the fear of losing marks even if it's just two points so I think it's really shaped me as a person that like eight o'clock does not mean 8 a.m it means 7 50 a.m so i think that's one positive point and another point is always um putting passion into it because without it you will not enjoy what you do even if it's for example when in my team people would um not like stewarding as much but for me any student that even been like till date i'm in bba7 and someone asks me what's your favorite ship it's it's been stewarding because of mr makarao as well as the fact that the the staff itself made motivated you to really scrape like for example it would be difficult for someone because of the smell or you know just holding the plate because it might be heavy at times but i look forward to it because it was it was learning in the real world like it wasn't just confined to four walls of a classroom so i think passion and time management is what i really remember for my first semester thank you monkey sahara you. can you remember something key from bba1 it was a few years ago but yes i mean bba1 like it really taught you the fundamentals like for for all the outlets you go from First from, because in my BBA one, it was only service while BBA two was kitchen back then. Okay. But then for, for my BBA one, like I trained throughout all the outlets, whether it's the, the marketplace to banquet to um, taco back then. So like you, they taught you how to understand all the F and B operation from different points, whether it's from like the all day dining to like a luxury service a la carte which give provides you the fundamental as i mentioned to prepare you to the real world so for example if you apply for an internship 
in F&B, then you're prepared. You know what you're supposed to do. You know the SOPs of a restaurant, which really helps and prepare you for the real world, as I said. Thank you very much. Thank you. So with BBA1, and it's, you know, experience is straight into, this is not rehearsed at all from the mouth of students who have experienced it, is part of the foundation of discipline, um, timing, structure, and everything, plus the memories of doing things, because you cannot really work in any hotel in the world unless you've been, you understand a little bit how the service works or the kitchen works or chopping an onion and the challenge of we've heard stewarding. They all, it's part of it. It doesn't mean that you have to do it in the future when you graduate, but you'll have experienced it. And if you have experienced it, you'll understand it. It's like making a bed to the standard of a hotel. It's not like throwing your duvet like you do at home, just to cover the mess, you know. They, so just to witness it, to see and live the routine, and it actually, even if you don't ever work in hospitality when you graduate, the fundamentals you've picked up there will make you a better host for the rest of your life, because you'll know a bit how to treat people, how to make this, how to make whatever, presentation of this, dressing up a table, whatever it is. So BBA1, practical arts, really a fun semester. And within the practical aspect, we have different courses as well, where you, know, you can start, and this is the important one, and I'll focus on, the, on your slide there, your restaurant lab at the bottom right-hand side. And the restaurant lab is really asking and already building something we want to really embed in your La Roche, um, development is that creativity, that entrepreneurial mindset. So here you'll be given a restaurant and you have to create your concept. By the end of a week, you have a project to do and that it doesn't matter what it is. It's about working together, being creative. And so th this is the idea already from day one. Of course, you don't do this on your own. You have you know, you're professionals looking after you, but you have that sort of, you can take a risk you can start discussing ideas and building from there. So different courses there, if I go on that right hand side as well, the top bullet point, the innovation entrepreneurship is all about creating that mindset where by the end of your BBA 7, the last of the academic semester, you are really ready, not necessarily to start your business, but to go and join a business to contribute to that business. And that's our really our role to provide you with the tools to achieve that by the time you graduate. So that BBA one. I still have my knives that I had 40 years ago at hotel school, okay? I well, I only have two left, but I still use them. Never, nobody can take them away from me, okay? <laughs> I'll hunt you down all over the world. I don't have the Chef White anymore, that disappeared. I don't know what happened, maybe it became too small. My muscles must have developed a different way. Anyway, so BBA2, this is your internship. So you will have worked with career services and I'll leave Christina to explain how that works. You do a project during that thing, a sort of reflection on your internship, but we don't need to go into detail of this. Then you come back to campus for BBA3, your third semester. And now we're starting to say, okay, hi, you went and worked in a hotel. Let's put pieces together. We need to understand a little bit more on marketing, on people management. So we have that managing diversity course here. Of course, any business oriented degree will have hospitality accounting. In this case here, we must make sure that you are fluent with your numbers by the end of your BBA 7. You need to understand financial statements. So Every semester we build on the knowledge. It may not be the most favorite course of all time, but it's a necessity in any walks of life, any business. You need to. Sustainability is being introduced. You know, you, there's different aspects. So now we are saying you've done your practical arts, you've experienced it in the industry. Let's start looking how a hotel can be a success in the future. So we need to put the pieces together and BBA3 is the first of those semesters. So this is on campus based, 
with your group projects, exams, and whatever it takes, and assessment individual, whatever. Then BBA4 is we look at, we now add a few more words in the management. So we're not just looking, we're looking at you being able to be the next manager. So it's in step again, we're just moving through the phases. And remember that many of the members of faculty or the people who have developed these courses have listened to industry, are from the industry themselves, and you know, we build and evolve over time to make sure that we stay current. And when I say current, is that when you graduate, you are ready for the future, not for the past. Yes. So those things are important, but you have more accounting, you have facilities management, uh, listening to Saharat. You know, of course, if you have a property and it needs managing the millions in the hotel are invested in the property themselves and it needs maintaining it is looking after as a student you need to understand what it takes you might not be in the role of managing it but you need to understand what it takes so it's always that blend of you know you can't be expert at everything that comes later once you have chosen a bit more your career path but you can certainly start building an overall picture of your of the industry you want to join then bba5 you go into internship again come back reflect and we now move through the final year of les roches which is building really on your learning somehow and i think maybe sahara at first this time can remember what it was like that last year in sort of work intensity? BBA 6, I would say it was one of the toughest semesters with one of the most su subjects with the most critical thinking. Like you, you need, for example, during my time there was, I mean, most of the subjects are the same, but one of the most critical one for me was data analytics and what it was, forecasting i would say if i'm not wrong yeah those like you need critical and like especially data analytics you need to use excel which was but at the end of the day all the subjects were very helpful and helped me even today when i still need to use excel running all those graphs and charts when performing all the performances of like the financial stats in the hotel thank you and Mangi. I just finished BBA 6 in February, and I think as well, it's one of the most rigorous semesters as compared to any of the academic semesters. It really puts you in the spot and it pushes you to, to maximize your potential and, like, and perform according to your capabilities. For me, the easiest um, subject was financial management because I, because I had the same teacher in BBA 3 as well. And one of the most uh, difficult or as, challenging was modeling because it was something completely new for me and it was difficult to pay attention in class because it was online but when but miss like the teacher was very approachable and he would he would teach us he, i mean he would just do a one-on-one -on -one session if we needed and his recordings were very helpful so i think it really it was a new thing altogether and and now that i'm like i'm in my bba7 and i see my my batchmates i'm always right to help them and they're like how are you so um you know how are you so comfortable with modeling and i was like it's because the teacher the 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 way the organ like the organization of the the academic moodle page as well as my own motivation to learn and take up this new challenge of learning a new subject made it possible thank you Great insight of those two. And then the, it builds to BBA 7, all this. And BBA 7 is the semester where you have your specialization, where you can start really specializing. And I think for the future students, and it's an opportunity that the current students haven't had, at La Roche, we started late last year, but call it at the beginning of this year, properly is this sort of innovation, it's park, we call it as a project, but if we have a dedicated person looking at embracing 
or partnering with industry, and it can be in all sorts of domains, not just hotels specifically, to become innovators. So they have questions, we have students, and we try to put them together and to become innovative or being creative. So in the specialization, and it's not going to happen for a year or two, we will have project with industry, so that applied project where we'll say, okay, maybe in the marketing specialization that you can choose, you would have a project with a marketing company that is looking at progressing in a specific area. I can't define what the mandate of those real companies is for them to come to us. So we have a dedicated person. They look, they discuss, we put together the mandate for that company. We will look at fitting it into the learning outcome in the course. So you'll be working as a group. It could be small group, it could be big group, it depends on the mandate itself, and introduce these. For new students starting Les Roches from September onwards, we will try to introduce different innovation or innovative project with industry partners already from BBA3. They may be short, short projects because they might not demand so much knowledge and they might be more specific to BBA7 in the sort of last semester where they're larger. You know, you have in certain semesters, like this current semester, BBA7, it's about 200 students. So it's difficult to do one project with a group of 200. So we need to have enough to make it possible. Um, we have on paper enough. The only thing we need to do for September now coming is matching the school Les Roches calendar to the industry need. Because if they say, this is a project and they give it to us the first week we go on holidays, and they want it returned to them by the first day we are back on campus, it's not going to work. So we need to align and industry partners, and it can be you know, relating to blockchain, it can be through technology, it can be traditional hotel businesses. Everybody is trying to look for solutions and we are offering them an opportunity to work with us. And for our students, it's an opportunity to work with real people on real projects and maybe be the new sort of innovator or creator of some ideas. So it's all about of fitting in that innovative mindset, entrepreneurial mindset, being proactive in creating something so that the day you graduate, you're really ready. You've gone through the process of being able to discuss with a company, of being able to suggest an idea or presenting it. Alongside, this is the study itself, and I have a few more slides, but it's also important in Les Roches, the way of life I talked about briefly earlier, is the extracurricular activities and the opportunities you have there. And very quickly, maybe we'll have Amanji telling us what activities did you join for development, and you know the activities better than I do. Yes. So since we were one, I was always um, active with any participation in events. So um, in my BBA one, we had the Future of Hospitality Summit. It was a student-led event for two days, and um, it was uh, where you would talk about the future of the hospitality industry. So I was part of the um, part of the organizing team for the event. Um, the main, the, there are many clubs in societies like uh, the culinary club, the wine club, the green club, where you can actually um, become a member and contribute to to the different ideas and the different, and you can take forward the club as well. If you, you school also gives you the opportunity to start a club. For example, one of my colleagues, she just started the finance club and it you can really i mean and you can also do activities such as zumba or dance and one of the main um one of the main uh as to say places you can enroll yourself is with the sga the student Gover governance association i have been part of the sga since pba one as well as a member and i've been part of various departments uh, such as the campus student life or the events department or even the clubs and societies department. So it really it it gives you an opportunity to to contribute to the community of the school as well and enhancing the way of life of school. 
Excellent, thank you. Saharat, what did you do during your time in La Roche? So I was a student ambassador for two consecutive semesters. So of course I showed the potential students around when they visit the campus and also for open days as well. So, and also one of the major events of the school, which is of course the cultural night, because I was part of that events, uh, as I selected events as my gen general elective. So I was part of the events team and I organized, I was the head of marketing and communications for that particular uh, culture night, where that the idea of it, I can't remember, but I think it was something like Christmas, Christmas fair or something, which it turned out pretty well, where the attendees, everyone was happy about it. And yeah, so it turns out pretty good. And last but not least, I was also the vice president of communications for Eta Sigma Delta, which is the honor society. So yeah. I was kind of slightly active during my last two years or so. Excellent. Thank you very much. But it shows, you know, behind or beyond the curriculum, the, the academic program we have, which is already good enough, but you can get involved in other activities. And the more you do there, the more you can do there, the more you're willing to do there, the better, certainly with regard to job prospects in the future. It's not compulsory, but it's certainly a great way to do more and to learn more. The So the next thing, because we are in the year we are, we have all heard about COVID, of course, so we have the option of remote learning as well. So you can start your BBA one first semester on campus, which is absolutely fine. There's the option of doing it partly in remote and partly on campus, so the, this 1010 in weeks, Connect 1010, it's a blended way of doing it, but it suits certain constraints because you might be prevented from traveling from the country of origin you are, but you are ready to start, so it's one thing to look at. And the next option is to do it fully remote, and you can do the 20 week program from your home, in essence, of course. To me, and because you know, the, the way we like to teach in La Roche, the face-to-face -face is the better option. The other are very good option. And you know, if you do your whole curriculum, you left the face-to-face -face in the semesters to come. But the connect, so be 10 plus 10 to 10 weeks on connect, 10 weeks on campus, or the 20 weeks on connect, on remote, you have basically your starter kit you receive your welcome pack when you're at home, giving you equipment and certain um, well bits of equipment for you to use during certain of the more practical classes, and you will have to integrate with the group. So it's not just opening a book and learning an exam or something, it is really integrate with the class as if you were on campus, but in a virtual remote way. So Three options there, more details certainly available from your education counselor, wherever they are in the world. But options exist, so either on campus, a blended way of doing 10 weeks and 10 weeks, or all in remote. And this is Le Roche also showing you that we are adapting to the current needs. The current needs is we have the COVID and we need to adapt it forced us to become more creative we only did face to face you know now we are recording every class today is recorded so even what we do in class uh, what i teach to a student tomorrow will be recorded and available to those students everything it's a blended learning like this all the time and we've all grown accustomed to it it works and you know we need to evolve and everybody adapts and change over time. Quick word before I pass the microphone to Christina to talk about careers. The admission requirement, you probably aware of it. Something to bear in mind is that the 17 years and six months is a necessity because certainly for with regard to starting your first internship, you would have to be 18 year old. So it's very important there, but 
I won't go through the details here of the all the grades you need and everything. This is you discuss this with your education counsellor. It's referred to our admission, and if there was a query, myself or Dr. Diamantis can answer it. We remain available to you after this session as well through whoever you want to connect with us, marketing, educational counsellor, we are always available. This is Leroche. You know, it, the family for you starts today, whether you want to join it for the next 50 years of your life, it's a choice you can make. But it starts you know, once you start connecting with us. After that, the future you decide, but we are always there. So Christina is going to take over now to talk about careers. Thank you very much, Frank, for giving such a detailed insight into the academic program. The bachelor's program, you will have two internships that you need to complete. Just a few things to reiterate what uh, Frank has shared. Firstly, it's the really the fact that our campus is very intimate. It's very close, knitted and very intimate. And that what makes me enjoy my job a lot is because I get to know the students from baby A1 when they come to visit our office and all the way to the point where they graduate. So for Hamangi and Sahara, I sort of came in halfway because I joined the company two years ago. Uh, but I know with Sahara, he came back from his internship and he came, you know, being really active, being really um, excited about what he was going to do after graduation. And he's actually one of the, um, uh, he, his company is actually employing some of our students for internship, which is really exciting. And I know with Hamangi as well, um, she came back from her internship when I joined the company, but I knew that she was very active in her search because one of the key things, as Frank has said, is uh, in global internships. Now, it's not compulsory, but definitely something that we highly recommend you to take advantage of considering that it's a school curricular internship. And what that means is that in terms of visas, which is usually a very big question, um, it helps you to open doors a little bit easier. So I'm very happy to um, let Hamangi and Sahara share more about the experience. Uh, but basically from the very beginning um, in terms of internship, we don't stipulate what kind of internship you have to do. I think that's the great thing about La Roche um, compared to other hospitality schools that I know. We give you the choice um, of what you want to do, uh, whether it's in operations, food and beverage and rooms, because that is what you probably know first with your the exposure to your uh, to your first year. Or if you want from the very beginning, you know that you want you, you like numbers, you want to go into finance, you want to go into revenue management, sales or HR. By all means, go ahead. You have our support. We can point you through, you know, like um, the partners that we work with. Um, especially if you are uncertain where to begin, we're very happy to share with you um, the list of partners that we have, which is, uh, and also back down to who you are as a person as well. I think that's very important because as much as everyone loves to go to the Four Seasons, it might not be the, the very good first step for some people where you need more guidance because our employers, depending on where they are from, have different expectations um, for our students. Um, other than traditional hospitality um, companies, we also have uh, entrepreneurial or startup companies um, that are hiring our students. Uh, we've got hotel management companies, we've got owners, we've got restaurants, so on and so forth. As you can see right here, companies who come, luxury brands who are here specifically uh, looking to hire our students because um, as you've seen in the video, uh, humility is one, uh, but more importantly, our students with more than 100 nationalities on campus, they know how to talk to people. Um, it's a very easy, it, it's easy to overlook the importance of talking to people, uh, but it's, uh, you know, coming from a place where it's a non-hospitality institute to La Roche, I can really tell you the importance of how you're able to demonstrate cultural sensitivity, how you're able to um, understand uh, the different short forms, the, uh, what it means in one language might not translate to the same to the other. Um, it all makes a difference. So we do not stipulate, you know, like that you have to do operations, um, although, again, it's a familiarity, but also, as Frank has said, it is the building block. You get to know the operations, even though it's super hard work. There are a lot of shifts that you need to work. I'm sure Hamangi and Sahara can share their experiences. Uh, but really, it builds you the foundation to be who you are, you know, to for Sahara to be able to be an executive director and share his views. Um, if you're okay, Sahara, would you like to share a bit more about your internship experience, the application to Hong Kong, and how it has, uh, how you're able to apply it 
to your current role? Yeah, so first of all, as I mentioned earlier, uh, I did my internship, my first internship actually in Lemurian Cyberport Hong Kong as a front desk. So during my time over there, I understood all the operations, like well, from checking in, checking out, and not only that, I was able to communicate with the sales and marketing team in terms of when the group's visiting, like the different groups, and also for finance in terms of the credit checks of each of the guests. And yeah, so there was a lot of communication going on with the different departments. So that that internship truly helped out, like shaped me as the person I am today, because I, I was like, there's a lot of experience going on in the hotel and stuff as a front office agent. And as you asked about the application go from Hong Kong, because like as, as a Thai, like holding a Thai passport, going into Hong Kong, you don't really require visa. So it's kind of easier for the application to go through. However, if I, I wanted to apply for a job or an internship in the UK, for example, that would be slightly uh, a lot harder. However, as you mentioned about uh, a non-operation department like finance or HR, for example, that would be a constraint for me because I don't speak Cantonese. Although I speak Mandarin, but the local language over there is Cantonese. So it would be a constraint for me in applying for the non-operation departments in Hong Kong, for example. So if if I say like um, at uh, applying for a job in a non-operation department, it would be better in places like Dubai, the UK, and probably your home, home country. But that's not maybe not something to suggest. Because as you study in La Roche, it's better to travel around the world. And yeah. Hamangi, you chose to do your internship in, in Portugal. Uh, yeah. Tell us a little bit about the, 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 the decision process and what brought you to choose Portugal for your internship. Uh, so first and foremost, since I'm an Indian passport holder, many of the options are narrowed down, especially because some places require an EU passport holder or some places require um, a certain language. So as an Indian passport holder, I was very active during my search and what brought me to Portugal was actually when one of my colleagues got in and then she um, passed on, she was very kind enough to pass on the contact and when I when they actually spoke to me and when I read more about the Ritz Carlton because it's a traditional company and um, I, I wasn't sure whether I would be able to fit into the com company because there are many things that a traditional company um, is very is very uh, it, they respect their values they respect their organizational culture and I wasn't sure whether I would fit in but after speaking to after speaking to the HR team and actually speaking to my restaurant manager as well I was confident enough that I would um, fit in and the application process was very easy even the visa was easy to get after multiple calls and and support from Mr. Augustinos as well as you. And what brought, what I really enjoyed the most um, was my was working in my team because I was in I was uh, a waitress in the F and B department in the multi cuisine restaurant. So I would meet um, different different people from different countries and cultures and and they would have different dietary requirements so it really it really um gave me a global exposure to 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 the f and b department as like i would like to put it that way thank you very much mangi i think you've pointed out a very important point i mean even though you might feel like and a lot of students might come to us and say oh but i come from this country can i work in a certain place um, just to reiterate because it's a school curricular internship there are some countries that make it a bit easier for you to to go there to work. But that being said, uh, we are not a visa office uh, agency, unfortunately. What we always would recommend students to do is to always call the embassy of your country just to check maybe you have, your country has a special relations with another country that allows you to work. Uh, but from our end, we give you a, all the documents and any information that we have to support you um, to go to that place. Um, it's very important. Uh, we have a career uh, uh, platform um, called Simplicity, where all our partners would post their jobs um, with us. Um, but that being said, that does not mean that you are restricted to our partners. If you do know someone somewhere like Homangi who was able to um, be connected through a friend, by all means, go ahead. Uh, again, we are here to empower you in your career search. Um, 
we don't do placements. We don't tell you, okay, you know, Hamangi, today you go to this hotel. Uh, we strongly believe that it is very important for you to make that decision because it's a learning process for you as well um, as you graduate, um, What, how you're going to take your career to the next level. Um, on the slide, you'll see some of the support that we provide uh, from the very beginning, CV and LinkedIn profile setups. Um, that's very important because um, that's how you present yourself to the world. Um, then career counseling, um, that really goes back down to what you really want uh, and what would be an, uh, would be suitable for you after discussion as well. Uh, again, I think that when you are on internship, uh, what's also important to know is that you may face problems, uh, whether it's because um, it's coming from yourself where it's a learning process or whether it is from the company where they said something and it did not uh, actualize we are here to support you and we have helped countless of students from being uh, let go due to financial loss from the company, due to unions, uh, due to the company shutting down as a result. And we are always here, you know, to really support you and go, okay, what's the next step? While bearing in mind that, you know, this is all for the uh, school internship and you are still able to complete it as well. Um, we're doing a lot of uh, workshops. Uh, we've just had some uh, LinkedIn and networking. Uh, we're having one that's happening this uh, week from a uh, American chef who is a Greek ambassador um, for, for Greek culinary in the US as well. So different things um, just to give you different stories and perspectives of how people uh, get a, a create their career, I would say. Um, one thing that's kind of interesting is that uh, over the last few years, we've gradually moved uh, or at least expanded our network beyond traditional hospitality. Uh, we have companies such as Montclair, such as Richmond with different uh, Louis Vuitton as well, who feel that, you know, like the five star luxury hotel training that our students have is something to be replicated in their store because it is, you know, like the same experience, the personalization, addressing people by name, anticipating the needs. Um, those are all skills that are transferable from industry to industry. Um, so I would say that uh, with the internship experience, um, it would really help you to grow and mature. I've seen students who from BBA one, you know, like coming in fresh and coming back from BBA three from their from their internship, you can see how much they've grown um, as a result. Um, these are just a, a snapshot of the alumni profiles um, that we have. Um, all of uh, them are very hardworking alumni, very happy to give back to, to, to our uh, community as well. Like for example, Saharat, uh, who is here giving his time um, to be able to provide insights of what it takes to get to the next level. Right. Um, I wonder if uh, Mangi, if you, uh, if you have anything to share, because I know that uh, you're, you have one more internship to go. Um, what is it like uh, with your last internship? How would you focus your next internship search? So for me, um, for my first internship, I was very keen on doing it in the operations on the in the operational side of the hotel. So I chose F and B because I'm passionate. I'm still passionate about it, but I wanted to. I've always wanted to do my second internship in the sales and marketing department. And as of now, with the current job market, it's um. It's slow, but there is always hope, and especially with the career day that just happened, it was a great um, platform to actually connect and network with many companies, as well as Simplicity offers you a lot of, um, it offers you a lot of opportunities and LinkedIn as well, because as we keep having um, sessions and what really helped me uh, kind of focus and make this de decision for myself was actually a, a Skype interview session with Jillian Lana as well, because she told me that, um, you you have the you have the the capability of selling something so when i really thought about it and i sat myself down to start my research for my second internship it's 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 when i decided that yes i would like to do it in this department and kickstart my career and in this department because i have certain um i have certain abilities that i can put there out in the world and make a difference which i would like to do so it's it's something that i look forward to oh. Well, if you need any assistance, you know where to come to. <laughs> and Hamangi touched on um, two points, uh, or at least one very important point, which I would like to add before I pass this back to Charlotte, which is the career day, or now we call it Connect and Recruit. And what we do uh, every semester is to invite our partners who are looking to hire from La Roche students, uh, mainly internships, but there are also opportunities for full-time jobs as well. 
um, to basically they want to come and see our students. They like our they like our students' profile, and they're here to really want to see how our students can be trained to be their future leaders. So this is definitely uh, something that everyone looks forward to, and we do our very best to invite a breadth uh, of uh, different industries and also to prepare our students um, in terms of how to present themselves, in terms of uh, networking tips, so on and so forth. And also, you know, on the day itself, what to do um, if we know something like, for example, Hamangi is interested in sales and marketing, we would say, hey, have you take, considered this company, so on and so forth. And I think that that is really the benefit of La Roche in terms of um, helping and supporting you in your career journey, that, that personalization. Right. So that's um, what I have to share about careers. I will now pass it back to Charlotte. Thank you. Thank you all so much for all your insights, information about the program, about careers and Hemangi and Sahara, about your, your experience at Liraj and after Liraj for you, Sahara. Uh, now it's time for some questions. Please uh, feel free to ask your questions uh, in the question box or chat box. Uh, here are already some questions that we can ask our guests. Um, uh, Christina, you just talked about career day. What What is career day like? Um, we have had it face to face, we've had it virtually. Uh, can you maybe tell our audience uh, what career day is like for, for a student today? So today it's, we have it virtually, but on campus, it's always very exciting. Uh, it's happening virtually as well. Where it's one day where you have no academic classes. You know, we have our students all dressed up and ready, and they are really going buzzing through the entire campus, trying to meet as many employers as possible. Um, it's not just about how do you call that the opportunity to ask, you know, like to see where the internship positions are, but really you know, to understand whether that company is for them. I mean, like what Hermangi did before with Ritz-Carlton, not, not knowing whether it is the right company, is really talking to the representatives and go, you know, like, am I, um, does, how, how would, do I see myself in this brand? So I think that's one thing. Um, it definitely also, how do you call that, uh, can help to change minds. Uh, you might have one impression of one brand and you might change it after meeting the representative. Virtually, uh, which we just had uh, two weeks ago, um, it's basically 98 companies all on all on all on the one screen uh, from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Um, mainly because people are located all around the world, and we have uh, employers representing China, representing um, uh, UAE, all the way to America. I'm excited to meet our students and really to see, you know, like uh, where where's the match. So. It's hard to imagine sometimes virtually, but Hamangi, you've attended, and Sahara, you've attended the virtual, uh, the the, the in-person career fair. Um, Sahara, perhaps you can share your experience of uh, how it was like. Like the in-person career fair, it was like amazing when you have different rooms for all the brands, like even, for example, big brands like Marin International, IHG, Hilton, Echo Hotels, although the room is like queued up for like, 50 students or so, but still like there there was like, for example, one of the brands like Marin International, there's opportunities not only at the corporate office itself, but also opportunities at the different properties of Marin International. For example, the Merit, JW Merit South Beach in Singapore and so, so forth. Yeah, so th there was a great, a vast group of employers coming to employ on at the school so it was one of the best opportunity you would get at La Roche. And Hamangi you've attended the virtual career fair recently how did that uh, compare to your face-to-face -face experience? I've attended both I've attended in person I've worked in as if as part of the task force and I've attended the virtual one the first time I attended the virtual one it was a bit different because I was not used to it and it was altogether very different because you're speak you're speaking to so many companies and your chat time compared to like in person is very less. So you have to really put yourself out there and it, it's actually a challenge to just present yourself in 30 minutes and be like, okay, this is what I'm looking for. These are my qualities. And it was an experience altogether. It's not it's it's fun as well because you get to chat with people and people you actually might know so for example um i i spoke to someone this time that was actually an mba graduate who just graduated so i he it was altogether very it was it was a surprise because i 
we've been friends but he, this was now a professional setup so it was a different um way of communicating a different way of presenting yourself and it was nice and as for in person i think that's that's the real opportunity when you are again you feel like you're in the real world because they're all experts from the industry and you you have to put yourself out there and create the best impression as you can and and it's it's one of and it's like a it's a victory if you land a job right in on career day they'll be like okay you know you have the job so it's it's amazing as it's it's an amazing day wonderful thank you uh, maybe a question for for you too again sahara and hamangi how do you choose your bb7 specialization you both chose the same one uh why choose that specific uh specialization and, and maybe sahara is also how did it help you after levosh so for me the reason why i chose marketing because i feel that marketing would be something that applied to my current job the most because like marketing give me the, the understand how would i um, bring my brand out to the public how would i gain the brand recognition and more than that is understanding the sem which is like all the ads you use the ads on facebook the ads on all the social media on and even google search how would that help and benefit me in getting the name of my of my brand at the end of the day out to the public and how would how would everyone know our brand and understanding the, our core values as what I am currently doing at the moment with my company? Thank you. Hemangi? I am as well currently doing and specializing the, in the market, digital marketing strategies. The reason I chose it is because I've always been inclined towards marketing and um, it's something in me that I would love to maximize and create it into a profession and um so in marketing you have four courses which appeal to me the most the the one that appealed to me the most was the digi digital marketing and media engagement where they actually te teach you about google adwords seo sem so i think um and especially with COVID kicking in it's extremely important to know how to market your brand or mark and create a market presence in an online environment because um I think it's key and it's like it's as good as a building block to your business because if not um as much as you are a traditional business as much as you might be uh like following your values i think it's extremely important to uh, market yourself in an online environment and that's what um you learn in this specialization through many courses it's it's actually like a it's actually like a it's it is repetitive in many ways but it the fact that for me i like it because it lets me really keep on going into that so it gives me a deeper insight and lets me learn more and i feel more inquisitive about learning new strategies or new promotional techniques which will always help me in the real world thank you both thank you uh, maybe frank uh, you mentioned uh, remote learning at the end of your your presentation so now we know that the first semester students get to choose whether they want to do it connect uh, partially connect or uh, fully on campus what is it like for other students, students that are in their third, fourth, sixth or seventh semester? Are they also allowed um, to, to be uh, remote, et cetera? Uh, yes, they are in the current situation, yes. Whether it will carry on for the next five, 10 years, I have no idea. Uh, but certainly the current situation, yes, for certainly for September, there will be an option in remote or to join campus a little bit later it's sometimes difficult to arrange a travel plan and the, the current condition and you know we have at the moment student in class student in remote waking up sometimes very early in the morning or staying up fairly late at night to join the class and with that sort of group dynamic is different because we but it's our duty to sort of include everybody in the group and we still keep to our small class size so even in remote learning we don't say oh we'll have a group of 300 students yes because you can't count i mean so we still keep to our class sizes of 25 30 students it depends 31 32 students and it works very well but nothing replaces the face to face that's my opinion and you know it's i can't do a virtual hotel and welcome in a 
you know, I can put robots and everything, but nothing will replace face to face, and that's it, you know. Okay. But it can be done. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we've got another question uh, about uh, submission. So, would it make a difference uh, to submit the application without an education counsellor? Is that to me? I, I actually could not answer you. I think it's probably you can try it directly through the admission team at Leroche, and then if there are questions and everything, then they'll refer you to the education counsellor. But it doesn't have to be. But the, the reason we keep it separate from my role, the program director, is that is to be completely impartial of who comes to Les Roches. It doesn't matter how and who and what and everything. You come and we have a program and then we take charge of delivering. So all that aspect, the pre-admission in a way, and we have this specific department on that with the well, marketing, the enrollment and everything. So it's not a direct under our remit. All right, thank you. And, and maybe one last question, I think the most uh, general one, but very important why, one is, why Le Roche? Uh, why should a student choose Le Roche and uh, what makes it so different? Okay, so if we think of a bachelor program, and if you think a little bit business-wise, most, or if you do a hospitality degree, it opens the door to many things. You can specialize later in life, and with lifelong learning, it's not a difficult issue to specialize, you know, be it in human resources, in leadership, in marketing, even beyond your bachelor program. You know, I'm talking master level in executive education in the future. So, it, but what it does, because a lot of the world economy, gravitate around the service and services industries, a hospitality school is really the best prepared to prepare you to be hospitable. And then how, we specialize in hotel and everything, but we appeal and we saw this with the career. You know, it can be private banking, it can be uh, luxury retail, it can be in airlines. Wherever you have service involved, a hospitality degree is really, really, really useful. Um, why Le Roche in particular? Well, because it's uh, not too sure which drives the other one, but the location makes it unique. It's a sort of a, a lovely area. Yes, it might not be a city. You're not in Shanghai, New York, or Tokyo, or London, or something. You're not city center but it gives a different comfort and you get to know people, you're not a stranger, you're part of a family and the small classroom, the, the faculty ratio 15 to 1, be it 15, 14, 16 to 1, it doesn't matter, it's a small number and everybody go, knows each other. The lobby in La Roche is unique, not by its design, by its feel, Everything is there, everybody knows each other, everybody feels comfortable there. And it's just that sort of place. And I don't know, you can't go to a drawing board and design it and say, this is gonna work. It just happens by the magic of the people who work there, the students who are there from all these different backgrounds and everybody joining force together. The cocktail is working. The ingredient is easy, you know, a bit of vodka, a bit of this, a bit of that. But blending it together to make it special, there's something magic and I don't know what it is and this is the skill and even if let's say anybody who starts a business, a restaurant, there's no guarantee it will work until it works. It's that magic, the right time, the right place, the right location for the right target market at the right, 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 right. And even that is not a recipe for success, it's just it works or it doesn't. And that's it. This is Les Roches. Unique, uniquely special. Uh, I want to add to that, you know, like with academics everywhere will teach you, you know, like now there's even online studies for you to actually learn the academic side. But having graduated from my postgraduate diploma um, in 2014 and then going on to work uh, in different parts of the world from UAE to Thailand to UK to Malaysia, as soon as I identified myself as, hey, I graduated from La Roche, there are some people whom I have never met in my life who says, 
oh my gosh, you're you from La Roche in Switzerland? Me too. Which year did you graduate? And just, just by the click of a finger, we connect. We've never met each other, but we connect so well, like we've and we could talk until you know the cows come home. It's it's just phenomenal in terms of the connection that you build. Um, I married a La Roche alumni as well, and we got uh, and our wedding was in a very small town in Italy. And that weekend, they probably saw the most international visitors. We had 23 countries gather in one small town, and you can only do that because of the national the people that you met you met in La Roche. Uh, it is really, as, as Frank said, that the relationship that you build is it's magical. It really is magical, even if you've never met. Just saying that you're from La Roche, it really connects people. Thank you, Christina. And I think Sahar, you would have experienced similar uh, similar things after graduating last year. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yep. So we get connect easy, easily, as Christina said, like. Wherever I go, whether I went for a meeting with all the GMs from different hotels in Phuket, I uh, still connect with a lot of La Roche alumni. Wonderful. And, and Thank you. Yeah, yeah, that's the most important thing in hospitality is the connection. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. And uh, we, we just have one more question uh, for you, Christina. Uh, do companies pay a lot of attention to grades? Uh, when they when they recruit during career day, when they recruit you for internships? Well, to be honest, I've not, I think it's all in terms of the application part, I've only seen, I would say, Asian companies who are more particular in terms of transcripts, but everywhere else around the world, they don't really ask for your transcripts. So grades wise, I would say it is secondary, not to say that it's not important. I think that your grades does reflect your attitude towards your work. Uh, but that being said, you don't have to be a top A student uh, to, to get a job. What's more important is really the skills that you have. Um, if you want to apply for a management training position after you graduate or a supervisory role, you do need to show that you are active. So for example, like Hermangi and, 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 and Sahara being active in student life, taking on leadership positions, um, demonstrating problem solving skills initiative. Um, those are more important um, on your CV and as you, the way that you carry yourself as a person, um, then your grades. Uh, and I think that if you have all of those those character, the grades will follow because it is who you are as a person in terms of your value. That even if you might not like it, you will still do your very best. So yeah, I would say that uh, it will all come together. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thank you, Christina. Uh, I don't think we've got any more questions. Uh, if you do. Think of something after this webinar please reach out to us as frank said uh, we're all available to to talk to you give you more information more tips uh, and and um, testimonials if needed so please feel free to reach out so we're now coming to to the end of this webinar uh, you have other opportunities to to hear about our programs over the next few days so when it comes to the bachelor's degree, there's one today uh, from Marbella, from Marbella campus, if you if you want to join in at 6 p.m. Uh, and then for those of you who are career changers, who already maybe have other but another bachelor's degree, um, you might uh, think of doing the postgraduate diploma instead of the bachelor's degree. So we've got uh, info sessions tomorrow at 1 a.m. 1 p.m. Sorry for for Cromontana, and at 6 p.m. for Marbella. So feel free to join those. And of course, we're, we're organizing webinars for our graduate school as well. So you can click on the link over here if you're interested to know more about all of our uh, programs. And then if you still want to know more about the BBA and the PGD, the, so the postgraduate diploma, uh, we're organizing live Instagram Q&As uh, next week on Monday and on Tuesday for both schools again at the same time. So again, thank you all for, for joining this session. Thank you to our guest speakers for sharing all of these information, uh, testimonials, et cetera. It was really, really useful, uh, I bet for, for our audience. Uh, we're coming to the end now of this webinar. Maybe Frank, Christina, Hemangi, and Sahara, you just wanna give one last word before we, we close this session. Shall I start? Well, thank you for attending. 
and you know the choice is yours but remember it's one family you would join and in the best sense of its term and it's a great industry i mean we i've spent what 40 years in this industry and i don't regret one minute being in there so it's a wonderful opportunity that opens the door to many 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 careers so hopefully we see you very soon on campus but thank you for attending christina i think uh, frank sums it up uh it is a very exciting industry i think that it was one of the days where i woke up and i go oh wow you know like i i am energized for the next day and i'm really looking forward to the new challenge uh, La Roche is really a, a very special place. Um, if you, my mom looks at it, she's not from here, but she looks at my my view every day and she goes, oh, it's like a resort. You're, you're on holiday every day. Um, so we do hope um, if you do choose to come see us, uh, to join us, that we get to see you face to face um, soon. Humangi? Well, thank you everyone for joining today. And yes, I think everything is said. La Roche truly is a way of life. And and once you make the decision of coming here, I promise you, you will you will come out of here a different person because you will meet so many new people. You will acquire so many new, new traits. You might discover yourself in a new way you'd never imagine. And yes, it truly contributes to a to a major part of your life. And it once you are out of here, because I'm nearing, trust me, you will miss these days and it these this is like the golden age of your life so we look forward to seeing you and for me yes truly la roche day was one of the best days in my life where you get to enjoy the scene of being in grand montana and the friends and everyone around you with a close-knitted community and yes i need to accept that la roche is truly the way of life and it truly shaped me as the person I am today. Looking back four years ago, uh, it's totally different from who I am at the moment. Yes, so hopefully you can, you can join us and be a part of our La Roche community together. Thank you. Thank you all so much. And as they said, we really hope to see you soon on campus. And thank you for attending and we'll, we'll see you very soon. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.